Researchers at the University of Minnesota believe they are getting close to a cure for osteosarcoma, the deadly form of bone cancer that took Sack's life. His legacy is living on every single day at the University of Minnesota. Chris Hager from 5 Eyewitness News spent the afternoon with researchers and one special member of the team who knows more about Zach Sobiak than most. So Mitch, tell me something about Zach that most people wouldn't know. Oh. Not he was a good hugger. I mean, I think, yeah, he was a warm guy um, that when you walked into a room, you know, even when he's in the midst of treatment and stuff, he, he filled it with warmth. Mitch Klusner and Zach Sobiak met at age 15. Silly guy. They loved movies and music. That's them and their friend Sammy performing a sweet little song called Blueberries. It wasn't just music, it was a spark in their relationship. Zach and I, we did like to uh, we play with fire a little bit growing up. And, um, you know, it sparked that. It was always curiosity, kind of a controlled experimental setting that, um, that we would enjoy playing with those things. And I think in a lot of ways, probably a... <laughs> ties into like kind of our love of science. That curiosity would serve them both well in the coming weeks and months as Zach battled cancer. We got along well because you know he had all these instruments from Make-A-Wish and I think I was someone who matched the same enthusiasm for both the music and all like the little technicalities of all the different instruments and um, yeah it was a lot of fun for us. The boys made the most of their time together. <laughs> And Mitch there with the cello. Their abilities to play that sweet little blueberry song ripen. It's my soul I need to be. It's so clear from watching you guys on the stage that you guys have this like really tight bond. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're playing music with someone, I mean, that's kind of the way it works. Yeah, it's a language of its own. Zach was getting sicker and sicker two months after this performance. He lost his battle with bone cancer. It's been seven years now? Yeah, yep, yeah, May 20th, 2013, yeah. You know, and I know time does heal mm -hmm. some of the wounds that the way you felt right when it happened yeah. and but having the time now to look back on it and maybe reflect on it a little bit more with the, with this with this movie coming out, what did that friendship mean to you? Mm -hmm. I think it meant for me being with another human who was experiencing death in such an immediate way, and knowing that we all deal with mortality. That's the part of living. That's hard for all of us. But being with Zach and exposing it in such a young age and exposing it in a way that we have a choice, I think, in how we respond to that scary reality. And with Zach, it meant, you know, what are we going to do now to have fun? What are we going to do now to make something of this life and to um, help others and to show love for others? And responding with growth and with love, and um, I think that's what it meant to me, and that's what it means to me, and how I move forward in my life with that time I had with him. Mitch took that love of science and the death of his friend and turned it into a career. I was first exposed to medicine in high school when we'd go up to the hospital and you know, now Zach's very doctors are my boss's boss. You know, they're my colleagues in this way. Uh, I still have a lot of training to do. I'm by no means a doctor yet, um, and I'm just a young scientist. He's working at a University of Minnesota medical school lab that got off the ground in large part because of the generosity of the Soviet family. Getting your own research lab is a challenge, and largely because of funding issues. And so having that upfront seed money to really get me going in my lab 
basically made it happen. If it wasn't for that, we may not have the lab we do now and have the clinical trials that we've initiated out of the lab. So very grateful to Zach Sobiak and his family. It just tremendous. These immune cells are active against the tumor. Using gene editing and stem cell biology technology, these researchers say they are making great strides. Building something uh, rather than taking it apart, you know, I think you really get an, a very in-depth knowledge of, of how something works by building it. And so in a sense you could say um, what we're doing is building cancer in a dish where we can really understand every aspect of how it forms and the hope is that this is going to lead to um, new discoveries and new ways to attack and essentially destroy the cancer in the end. Clinical trials happening here are leading the way to develop immunotherapies that will help patients fight cancer without some of the painful side effects. The old saying goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. In this case, when life gives you blueberries, make a cure for cancer. I know that when I walk into this building every day, I feel Zach with me and I feel energy to do work that helps stop other people from suffering like Zach did and gives them an opportunity to breathe and to have life and to make the best of these finite years we have. The Children's Cancer Research Fund believes a world without childhood cancer is possible and are leading the way with research, education, awareness, and quality of life programs for childhood cancer patients and their families. Donate today.